welcome back to the channel. This is my first vlog that I'm filming since being laid off from my job. So I thought we'd do a little days in my life in New York being unemployed, a little fun employment diaries, if you will. Kind of taking it day by day, figuring it out. If you're also in a period of life where you're feeling a little bit lost, welcome to the club and I'm glad to have you here. All the comments on my last video, the video that I made about getting laid off were just so heartwarming i truly like can't thank you guys enough for just the support the like words of kindness and encouragement so many people sharing their stories of getting laid off or having a massive like career pivot or like identity crisis at various stages throughout their lives like you have no idea what it means to me to just have this community it really does help me feel so much less alone during this time of uncertainty. I feel really, really lucky to have such wonderful people behind me, so I just wanted to thank you guys so much. If you are new here and don't know what I'm talking about, hi, my name is Michelle. I am a 20-something living in New York City, and I was recently laid off from my job at Vice and Refinery29. And now we're figuring it all out. We're gonna figure it out together and I'm gonna bring you along for the journey. I run this channel with my sister, Aline, and we're roommates as well as best friends. And we document our lives here living in New York City and um, living together as roommates in our 20s. So it's a good time and we'd love to have you. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We're a few weeks post layoffs now and I'm trying to find the balance, like the happy medium between um, having a new normal and a new routine while also allowing myself to be adventurous and really make the most of this time. And that being said, why don't we just hop right in to a few days of my life in New York City. loveliest start to the week and it's crazy how much this week so far is just the polar opposite of what last week was for me last week i fell into a little bit of a spiral about what i'm doing next what i'm doing with my life what the next year looks like for me what do i want out of life and my career and definitely had a lot of existential dread and kind of an identity crisis if we're being honest. Not gonna lie, last week was a little bit rough when it comes to my fun employment journey. Not so, not so fun. But uh, this week I'm determined to make the most out of this period of my life because I know once things work out and I look back, I'm gonna think, damn, I wish I just relaxed and had fun and took advantage of just having this free time and having, you know, time between jobs while also having financial stability is such a blessing. Last week, I definitely self-isolated a lot and, you know, kind of, kind of avoided going outside, making plans, all essentially with the mission of saving money. Well, of course I wanna save and be responsible with my finances. I don't think it's necessary to kind of like swing completely in the other direction and just never leave the house and kind of like punish myself uh, during this time of unemployment. Um, so this week we're trying a little something different. Today was definitely a little bit more out and about. I met my friend Avery Claire and her girlfriend Julia at St. Jardim in the West Village and it was the first time that we like all properly hung out and got to chat and we met in person at a party beforehand but this was such good quality time and we honestly hung out from like 
10 to like 1, 1 1.30. And it was just so nice. I love when you meet people from the internet and they're like exactly the same in real life. It's so nice when you hit it off right away and just instantly click. And that doesn't always happen. So it's so special when it does. And yeah, we just got along so well and had so much fun. And super needed too this week. I think I really was craving getting out of my day-to-day -day bubble on the Upper West Side. I'm such a creature of habit and typically will go to all the same places in my neighborhood, which I love, but it's so fun to like venture downtown on a weekday. It just makes me fall in love with New York even, even more than I already am, which is saying something. It's so fun to explore and go to cute spots on a weekday because you're obviously like beating the crowds. It's just a very cozy, locals only, very chill, relaxed vibe. It's just my favorite way to explore and enjoy the city, honestly. So I wanna take advantage of doing more like weekday exploring because it really is like a completely different New York. I honestly don't love going out and about on weekends. Like it is so overstimulating, so like stressful and it typically like takes the enjoyment out of like anything you do whether it's like going to a museum or going to a restaurant um it's just yeah i prefer to do things on a weekday but yeah we had amazing breakfast sandwiches incredible lattes and then walked to a little magazine shop went and grabbed a croissant and sat on their stoop and it was just it was just such a quintessential new york day and the sun started coming out and it really was a little dose of lightness to kick off the week strong and just put me in a better place mentally but yeah it was so nice to see friends explore the city a little bit get out of my bubble and just enjoy my monday and really take advantage of the current situation that i'm in i definitely am not gonna be like cafe hopping um every single day but yeah definitely once in a while it's such a nice treat and a complete game changer to really lift the spirits i was going to head home and then i remembered that i packed my sketchbook and i decided to settle in to one of my favorite cafes o cafe and get an acai bowl and people watch and do some sketch and I'm trying to get into a place where I give myself permission to make art that I don't like. Like I didn't really work on anything that I love today, but I'm trying to battle like my perfectionist demons and just like do art for the love of it, not for like the performance of it and not to like make stuff to post online. I think that I definitely fall into that habit of being like, I can only allow myself to be creative if I'm going to produce something that's worth sharing, but that's just like so toxic and doesn't lead to a very like free and creative life. So I, yeah, had such a good time, like for hours, just like doodling in my sketchbook and didn't particularly love anything I made, but like had a great time and definitely found out things about like my style, my process that I like and I don't like. And um, I've been using a lot of colored pencils, but I wanna get back into watercolor and I wanna play around with gouache a little bit because the like couple times I've tried it, I've really gravitated towards it. This week, my art course in Cold Spring is starting. It's a six week course and it's all about establishing a creative practice in your sketchbook. And that's just something that I really wanna focus on. And I'm really excited. I do feel like my main goals for 2024 were cultivating community and creativity. And I think I'm doing a really good job, like three months in pretty consistently, like prioritizing creativity and also building community and uh, meeting new people and like hosting little gatherings in my apartment and I'm really proud of myself for that. As much as this year really took a turn recently with getting laid off, I do think that I'm very much aligning with my goals and my values and that feels really good especially when I'm like spiraling about like what I'm doing with my life. I'm really settling into my values and my goals and um, I am moving forward even if I can't see it. So I spent some good quality time at O Cafe doing some sketching, some doodling and I headed back uptown. It's so nice that the West Village really is only like a 25 minute commute back. I ended up stopping by the lamp repair store and picking up my lamp that needed to be repaired and it was so nice. It ended up only being $25 because the wire is like completely severed and the top part of the lamp was like falling off and I was worried it was gonna cost like $100 to repair and end up being $25 and for a little antique lamp that I really do adore, that's, you know, a no brainer. And it was so nice to repair something instead of throwing it out onto the street. I'm really excited because that's the lamp that we keep on our desk 
and we haven't been able to use the desk. Aline and I downsized to one desk because we just never work side by side. So we have one desk now and we haven't been using it during the evenings because it's so dark and like we don't love overhead lighting. Um, I think we're all on the same page here that the big light should never be used. But we now have a little desk lamp again and I'm so excited because sometimes I'll be like editing a video or like drawing in my sketchbook and once the light goes down I have to like get out of there. So I'm really happy that is something that's been on my like running to-do list for things to do in the apartment for so long and now it's taken care of. I need to get a different bulb for it. The bulb that I have just isn't as compatible as like a classic I think incandescent light bulb he said. So I'm gonna pick up a new bulb for that this week but yeah this was such a nice start to the week and overall my goals this week are just to be to try to be present, to try to be gentle with myself, and to practice sparking joy and having more fun and enjoying the day-to-day -day and the in-between because I really don't want to punish myself during this time. I want to enjoy this time and use it to pour back into myself. So that is what we're going to do. For the rest of the day, um, I'm actually going to get changed into my workout clothes. I'm going to a Soul Cycle class and Aline and I typically do Sweet Green Mondays. It's just such a nice way to like give yourself a reprieve from cooking. Have a nice nutritious balanced meal that you don't have to cook yourself on a Monday night just because Mondays are usually just like, yeah, it's tough getting back into the week. I definitely did a lot of buying food out, but you guys know that we love to cook in the home as well. So it balances out. And I'm trying not to make myself feel guilty about it because I do so much cooking, especially when I talk to other people who live in the city. We're gonna go get a good sweat in because that has also been so helpful for my mental health and always is. So excited for that. <laughs> few days I've definitely noticed I've been eating out a lot. I've been grabbing brunch with friends quite a bit and I also noticed that during this like kind of rocky time it's so easy for me to convince myself that I deserve a little treat which I do most of the time. But those little treats definitely have been adding up and I'm just really craving making a nice home cooked meal tonight and having a chill night in. I'm very much still trying to figure out the balance between like wanting to leave my apartment and have fun and see friends, grab lunch, um, treat myself here and there to kind of like spark joy and also wanting to save money and budget and also find myself a new little routine. But I'm super excited tonight on the menu. I'm making this salad that I've been wanting to make for a long time. I saw Carrie Murray, who I love here on YouTube, make this salad during her Vlogmas and it's a Westville salad and I haven't actually ever been to Westville, but there is an Upper West Side location opening soon, which I'm really excited about because this salad sounds right up my alley. It's got kale, it's got pickled onions, a very lemony vinaigrette, dried cranberries, walnuts, and it has blue cheese traditionally, but I'm gonna use goat cheese because I prefer goat to blue. And then I got some breaded chicken from Trader Joe's, which I think would pair really nicely, just add some protein. Since I haven't really been in my cooking era, I wanna make it a little bit special. Aline and I will probably have a nice little glass of wine just to elevate it that much more. I recently, in the past like year or two, have been getting more into wine. I still don't really know a lot about it, but I'm fully entering my wine mommy era and I love a glass of like crisp white. And so I'm super excited to thank the sponsor of this video, Bright Cellars. I find liquor stores and the wine aisle to be super intimidating as someone who really doesn't know too much about wine and I end up just choosing a wine based on the label. I think a lot of us do that, just like finding the cutest bottle and going with that. But I love that Bright Cellars lets you take a very easy, very fun seven question quiz and it pairs you with wines that they know you'll love. And if you happen to not love a bottle, your Bright Cellars concierge will happily replace it, which is so nice. Basically having that like 100% satisfaction guarantee. I also really love that they send you these um, really cutie pie wine education cards. There's a card for each bottle in your box and I love that it breaks down the notes 
of each bottle and also the pairing suggestions for the foods to pair your wine with as well as event suggestions for example this one says enjoying the colors of an early sunset which what a vibe what a time i wish i was enjoying the colors of a sunset but um we're not doing that today we're gonna enjoy the colors of inside my apartment. I know that I just said it's not about the label, but look how cute they look on top of my hutch. I love displaying like nice bottles of wine on top of this hutch and um, I have my entire box up here and they look so cute and also so delicious. So I'm thinking based on these little flavor pairing cards, the best one might be this Avast Wines Chardonnay. Um, it says it's a medium bold white with notes of tangerine, lemon curd, shortbread, and cinnamon. Um, and that it pairs best with baked cod with peaches and lemon or buttered popcorn. I know it's not baked cod, but we're doing baked chicken and also a lemon vinaigrette. And also the buttered popcorn makes me think that it'll pair nice with like the crispy breaded chicken. Um, so this is probably the closest bet. You can't go wrong with a medium bodied white I think I think it'll be a good time. So we're gonna try this tonight and we're gonna make some dinner. So if you also wanna give Bright Settlers a try, make sure to tap that link in my description box and you can take the very easy, very fun seven question quiz on your taste preferences. And then they'll match you with wines you'll love from all over the world. This link will also hook you up with a sweet, sweet discount. You'll get your first six bottle subscription box for only $55 instead of their usual 150, which is amazing for six bottles guaranteed that you'll love um i can't think of anything better honestly so a huge thank you to bright sellers for sponsoring this video and why don't we get cooking and uh pop this bottle shall we Saturday. It's bright and early this morning. I woke up at 6 because I am going to catch the 750 train to Cold Spring today from Grand Central Station. I think I mentioned it earlier in this video, but I'm taking a weekly, six week long art course in Cold Spring. You might be thinking, why Cold Spring? Why not just take one in manhattan honestly it's kind of tricky to find like this style of course i found that a lot of art courses in the city are there's a lot of one-offs for sure i mean i love happy medium but it's very much like a one and done type situation there's also a lot of like college level courses which is not what i'm really looking for and then a lot of stuff for kids obviously this class also had the right style i was looking for it's less technique based and more based around establishing a creative practice in your sketchbook with pencil watercolor and ink so it's just right up my alley and it's a lot of talking about creativity I recently reread Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and it honestly just like rocked my entire world the first time I read it I was 
still in college i very much had my business major cap on still so i don't think it really sunk in or resonated with me at the time but now where i'm at in life it just really hit me hard and was exactly a lot of what i needed to read especially about like living through fear and beyond fear as a chronically frightened person it really it really hit home this vlog has actually been filmed throughout a couple weeks instead of during one week i have found that i've struggled with vlogging around other people i just i don't know not saying that i'll never vlog around other people or that i don't want to or that here and there i can't make it work but when i'm like making plans with people i would rather just be present with them i find that getting b-roll is really easy and doesn't really interrupt the flow of things but like me updating you guys and like talking through things um i feel like it turns like the quality time into content of course my friends would not care and they would like encourage it and embrace it but at the same time like for our own friendship i do want to try to be present and enjoy that time with them so last week i had a lot of like stuff with friends and i even went to my art course for the first time last week and i went with aline and her girlfriend ellis i got a couple clips here and there but i eventually just like gave up because i wanted to spend quality time with the two of them but since today it's just me i would love to bring you guys along and be able to like have you keep me company a little bit because I'm a little bit nervous. It feels like first day of school vibes, even though I went last week. But last week I had I had my parents drop me off. And today it's just me. So what time is it? I just need to make sure I'm not talking too much. 6.30, not bad. I definitely don't have to get too glamorous because it's a very like wholesome chill environment all the women there taking the class are older than me which i love especially i think at this point in my life like i'm having so much like anxiety about like time slipping by too quickly and anxiety about like starting over later in life and like it's really inspiring to surround yourself with people like older than you and wiser than you i think this class is going to be exactly what i need we did a bunch of like warm-up exercises and kind of like walked through our sketchbooks a little bit and everyone did like a show and tell of what they've been working on this week i'm also planning on getting there early like about like 45 minutes early because i do have a few like assignments in my sketchbook that i want to work on i'm struggling with balancing my time with wanting to create more content for social media wanting to like work on my assignments for this class and then honestly like doing a lot of like spring cleaning organizing stuff in the apartment i feel like my last job really prepared me for this time of unemployment because i had such a low workload that i had to learn how to like fill my own time and i really do not struggle with finding things to do i feel like i have so many hobbies and interests and if anything like there's never enough time for all of them so i have not been struggling at all to like find stuff to do during um this transitional period like it's been like i've been pretty booked and busy i'm so tired especially because i haven't had coffee yet because i really i've been trying to stick to just one coffee a day and i really want to savor my coffee on the train so i think i'm gonna grab it at grand central it's gonna be raining all day today so um i'm not gonna do my hair or anything because with the wind and the rain like there's just no point so i'm thinking of doing maybe like some little braids or something i packed most of my bag yesterday i packed it last night so I feel a lot more prepared this morning, which is so nice. But yeah, a lot of the beginning of this vlog was shot last week for me. And this week I've done a lot better of a job at like making meals from home and having coffee at home. It's the first Saturday that I'm going to my class by myself. I'm definitely gonna treat myself to some coffee, maybe have lunch when I'm in cold spring 
and it'll be so lovely in the future with this class i definitely want to get better at like planning okay am i gonna like bring some snacks am i gonna make my own coffee beforehand but since it's the first time i'm headed there by myself i want it to be i want it to be a little special anyway i'm gonna wrap up this makeup segment because i have to get dressed why am i so backlit this is not ideal um anyway you guys have seen this sweater it's like my favorite thing i've ever bought we've got the um red james street co sweater i very much got this on their winter sale uh would never get this full price it's just so expensive it's, it's expensive with the sale too um i got this when i was employed and um it's i i have no regrets i've worn it multiple times a week ever since i got it love this sweater super cozy then i got these kind of like wide leg straight leg black jeans um that were a hand-me-down from my friend lauren and i love them they're like my favorite black jeans and they're old navy so we love to see it super cute i'm trying to decide whether i want to wear my blundstones or if i want to wear my everlane rain boot i have to decide now but um yeah it's hard i guess i should wear whichever one is more comfortable i would want to wear these but like they're kind of small i feel like they're like a half size too small i don't know why because my other Blundstones fit me fine and they're the same size. Okay, everyone, I've made it on my train and i feel so good i got to grand central with about like 20 minutes to grab coffee i grabbed a little oat cappuccino and a plank of salt and we're all good to go i just activated my ticket so yeah something i love about growing older is no longer flying by the seat of my pants as much i feel like when i was younger it was just constant constant flying by the seat of my pants and that's a nice last call 750 hudson line train to poughkeepsie tarrytown first stop and that's something i appreciate about getting older and just giving yourself making things pleasant for yourself like even something as simple as a commute like it doesn't have to be as excruciating yeah I'm going to i think do my morning pages on this train ride and it'll be so main character of me to go back to New York City and I had such a nice day I will say that it is so cold and so rainy so I didn't end up running around and exploring as much but the class went so well it's just it's just amazing I love it so much and afterwards I painted a little bit in my sketchbook and then treated myself to lunch and popped into a little bookstore so it was a really successful day and I'm looking forward to heading home now though because it is so cold and so miserable. And we're home safe and sound everybody. What? What a day. I had the time of my life. I'm not gonna lie. I did in fact feel like 
the main character. I felt like a little witch in a Studio Ghibli film. And I loved every second of it. My art class was so fun. I absolutely love my instructor. She's just so fantastic and so talented. Um, super, super inspired by her and everything she does. Um, I showed you guys a um, little clip of we're doing 108 gratitudes. So I started doing my gratitude list just a bunch of bits and pieces of things I'm grateful for. And then we had to come up with a mixtape, which uh, you can see right here. I designed it. Uh, the birds are giving a little bit millennial tattoo. I am, in fact, a millennial, so I can say that. The birds are giving a little bit millennial tattoo, but they are inspired by the crows in Kiki's delivery service. So I think that that makes them a little bit more classy. And I think they look cute, you know? I think I made it work. And the songs on this playlist are all songs that I like to listen to during my creative time. I'll link that playlist down below. It's going to be called Ursula's Cabin after the iconic artist in Kiki's Delivery Service, who is like the painter that gives Kiki the big talking to about finding your own inspiration and taking a break and taking it easy on yourself. I picked this up last week when I went to Cold Spring, but I thought I'd share it because I know y'all love when we talk books. But this is The Creative Act, A Way of Being by Rick Rubin. And my friend Laura recommended it to me. So I'm super excited. As she said to read this after I finish The Artist's Way. So I'm excited to read that to keep the creative flow going. But yeah, I had such a lovely day. Even though it was rainy, it felt so cozy, very special. I feel like these six weeks are already flying by. When I signed up for this course originally, I was a little bit worried that I would get really drained going out to Cold Spring Weekly, but I really don't feel drained at all, especially because usually my Monday through Fridays have been really tame. Even when I was working, I was working from home and not really commuting anywhere. It ended up being such a perfect commitment, and I didn't explain really why Cold Spring when I was getting ready this morning. Aline and her partner go to Cold Spring all the time for like their anniversaries and each other's birthdays and things like that. Um, special occasions, if you will. They've raved about Cold Spring for years. And I think it was in 2022, I went for the first time just for the day. And then last year we went with our friend Veronica, the four of us, and we stayed at Pig Hill Inn. And it's just such a beautiful little town. And I, I love it there. It's such a perfect day trip from New York City super easy to get to on the Metro North and also a beautiful little like overnight slash weekend trip um but yeah I've been really enjoying getting to go weekly and getting out of the city getting some fresh air and yeah it's been so peaceful I'm looking forward to seeing the progress on my sketchbook and on my like personal art style throughout these next, I guess I have four, four more weeks. So throughout the next four weeks, um, we do have homework for our art class and I'm really excited to get a little bit more disciplined in making sure I like, and, and figuring out a time each day that works for me. I'd love to get to a point where I'm comfortable just like picking up my sketchbook casually. I think I tend to get a little bit precious about it, but I'm getting better. I'm getting a little bit better at being a little bit more um being a little bit more consistent and a little less perfectionist about like where and when I pick up my sketchbook. So, uh we're getting there all about slow progress. Slow progress is still progress. But yeah, the rest of the evening I'm just going to edit this vlog for you and schedule it for Sunday. I've had a lot of fun with this one, so I hope you guys enjoy it too. Um it's been such a joy to film and edit this one. And that's it for today's video, everyone. And the first fun employment diaries. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you liked this video concept and what you would like to see from it. Um, and if you watched this far into the video, comment a wine emoji for our lovely sponsors, Bright Sellers. Thanks so much again to them for sponsoring this video. If you wanna give Bright Sellers a try, don't forget to take advantage of that 
sweet, sweet discount and tap the link in my description box where you can take the quiz and get started today. A huge thank you to all of you for watching and again for all of the sweet words of support and encouragement during this really weird, really crazy time for me. In the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram and on TikTok to keep up with me, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you.